In this short video, I'm going to talk about pumped storage hydropower. But before talking about that and what it is and how it works, let me give you a very quick introduction about electricity supply and demand. All right, let's show electricity supply and demand on this graph. On y-axis, we're going to show supply and demand in kilowatts. And on x-axis, we have time of the day. All right, we are going to start. The beginning is going to be midnight. And the end is going to be midnight as well. And then let's have 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. over here. Um, so if I ask you, on a typical day, how do you use electricity? You're going to tell me that in midnight, we, we are not using, you're usually asleep, right? So we're not using electricity. So it's going to be, the demand is going to be low, right? And then 6 a.m., around 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and again, this curve that I'm going to draw over here, it's an average, right? It changes depending on where you live. Um, 6 a.m., around 6 a.m., when you get up, you start to use a lot of electricity. So the demand goes up. And then in between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or the time that you come back home, you're not going to use a lot of electricity because you are at school or you're at work. So you are working, you're not using a lot of electricity. So it's going to go slightly down. And then once you're back home, you're done with work or school, you're going to again use a lot of electricity. Then the demand is high. And this peak is normally higher than this peak. All right. And then again, midnight, the demand is low. So if I connect these dots, you will see a general trend of daily electricity demand. All right. Now we are going to talk about electri electricity supply as well. Um, let's say that there are different sources for electricity, right? Let's say that you are um, using solar uh, for electricity, to generate electricity, right? Uh, that means that whenever you have the sun, you're going to generate the electricity. When there is no sun, the electricity is not there as well. So let's say that we have the generation of solar electricity is something like this. 6 a.m. is when sun goes up and 6 p.m. is when sun goes down, right? Okay. Um, you can see that it is not evenly distributed uh, different times. Whenever you have sun, you have electricity. But if you do not, do not have the sun, electricity is not there. All right. Um, the other thing would be wind, for example. You are using wind to generate electricity. Again, uh, some days you might have windy days and some days it's not windy at all. Um, so just to, and even within a day, you might have early hours of the day windy and then not, not windy. So it's actually fluctuates, right? So I can basically uh, show you, show that something like this. So it fluctuates, right? And this is wind generated electricity. And this blue one is solar generated electricity. What else do we have? We have um, fossil fuel and nuclear generated electricity. And that actually creates or generates electricity at uh, a constant rate. So it would be something like this line. And this would be, okay. Now, take a look at all of these. This is a very messy graph over here, right? But what I want you to take from this graph is this. There are some parts of the day that you have extra electricity. Take a look at this part, for example. You have extra electricity that is higher than the demand that you are not using. And there are some parts of the day that the demand is higher than electricity generation, right? So if I ask you to solve this problem, probably you're going to tell me that why not have a battery, a huge battery, 
this is how great my drawing is, right? So this is a battery, and let's store this excess electricity inside this battery and use it when we need it, over, right over here. This is where we need it, right? Um, what if I tell you that there is a sustainable way of storing this electricity using water? This more sustainable way of storing electricity is called pumped storage hydropower. And we're going to learn about that. In order to create a natural battery using water, we need to have two reservoirs, exactly like the animation that you are seeing right now. One reservoir is located lower, and one reservoir is located higher. So the lower reservoir is located right over here, and then there is an elevation change, and there you have your higher reservoir. So this is water over here. And this is water over here as well. And as you can see, there is an elevation change between the surface of water and these two reservoirs. You're going to have two lines, one pumping line and one turbine line. A set of pipes will pump water, and I'm going to write P over here. This is a pump. A set of pipes are going to pump water to the higher reservoir when you have excess electricity that you're not using during the day. Okay? And then when you need more electricity in a day, then you are going to have another set of pipes in which they have a turbine in it. And water by gravity is going to flow down and create electricity and give you electricity when you need it. So let me repeat that. When you have excess electricity, you're going to use that electricity to pump water up the hill into the higher reservoir, right? And then when you need electricity, you're going by gravity, the water is going to go down into these pipes and there's a turbine over here. This turbine is going to generate the electricity and feed the system so you can use that electricity. This method has been used in the U.S. and around the world to generate electricity for decades. And it's very sustainable because it uses natural law of physics, physics and gravity, right? Let me know in the comment section what you think about a pumped storage hydropower.